I have another meal I want to share with you today. This is one of the most requested of all the recipes that I share. Pizza. So if you're interested in seeing how I'm going to make pizza out here in the woods, keep watching. So yes, the most requested of all the low-carb or ketogenic friendly recipes that I was requested to come up with and share with you from out here in the woods was pizza. So I had a few suggestions from viewers. They were all great. I have done my own research. I've made a lot of pizza at home to try to come up with a couple that would work out here in the woods. Um, this is the first time I've made this in the woods. I've made this probably half a dozen times at home. I'm hoping it'll work and you'll see why when we get to it. The, there are basically three different pizza crust recipes. I mean, after the crust, everything else is pretty much the same. But there were three different crust recipes I, I came across. One was made with cauliflower, which works. It's okay. I have nothing against it. It's certainly low carb, certainly has good taste. Texture is fine, but I found that it was hard to pick up. It wanted to fall apart. So if you don't mind eating it with a knife and fork, then uh, well, we'll do that one. We'll do that one at some point. Um, I'm a old-time pizza guy that likes to pick it up, fold it, and shove it in my face kind of guy. So, you know, I, I don't always, well, I don't usually eat it with a knife and fork. I, on occasion, just to be a little fancy, you know. The second recipe is either almond flour, coconut flour, or some combination. So the primary ingredient in the crust is almond or coconut flour. I have one that I've worked on that will work, and I will be sharing that one with you. Uh, good recipe. It does work. It does stay soft. It's a little higher in the carbohydrates than the one I'm going to share with you is, but uh, much lower than a flour one. The challenge with making one out of coconut or almond flour is unlike wheat flour, there's no gluten. So it makes it very difficult to hold it together. You have to use some type of a binder to help keep it together. And in the keto world of cooking, I've learned that there are a few of them. One is psyllium husk, another one is xanthan gum or guar gum, and eggs quite often work. You can cheat a little bit and use what's known as vital gluten, which is the gluten removed from, from wheat flour. And uh, that's not recommended most of the time because it is can cause inflammation for a great number of people. I've avoided doing that. I may use it for myself because I don't think I have an issue with it, but for the recipes I want to share, I want to avoid anything with gluten in it. The last one though, this one is really cool. It's called a fat head pizza. Now, I'll be honest, the first time I tried it, it didn't work out. I had to try it a few times before I figured out the trick to making this work. So what is fat head pizza crust? The crust itself is almost completely made of mozzarella cheese. It has a little bit of almond fl uh, flour in it and a few other ingredients I'll share with you as we go along. But the whole crust is almost completely made from mozzarella cheese. And it is tasty, like you wouldn't believe. It is flexible. You can pick it up. It is very low in carb. It's very high in fat and protein. It's pretty much the ideal keto low-carb pizza crust, in my experience so far. So, let's get to it. So likely you've gathered already that it's kind of cold out here today. There is a light snow in the ground, but uh, don't let that fool you. We're down around minus 9, minus 10 degrees. I debated coming out and making this video today because of what's involved, which you, I think it'll be self-explanatory in a minute. But we're going to have some wet weather and stormy weather for the next few days, and I thought I'd give it a try. So if you're watching this video, I was successful. If it doesn't work out, I'll come back out and try it another uh, another time. All right, so just before we begin, I just want to take the time to point out that all the implements, all the implements that I'm using today are all secondhand. They all came from our local thrift store, Value Village. Nothing here was purchased brand new. Okay, I, make, I, uh, I take that back. The containers for some of the food, those are brand new. But all the cooking, the cooking implements are secondhand. Now, there is a number of ways I could have actually cooked or baked the crust, but uh, why don't we start with that first? How am I going to do the baking? See, even the spoon is secondhand. This is a little piece of material that's nonstick. I'll explain what I'm doing with that in a minute. So this has appeared in a few other videos. 
This is my Pele pan. It's a curb and steel that I've been seasoning up over time. Love using this, fairly lightweight. Uh, all the benefits of cast iron, it with a fraction of the weight, works well. Pay, cost, pay li very little for it. This is a nine inch or eight and a half inch pizza stone that I also found at the thrift store. That is going to be the heat sink for the pizza. So I'll be cooking the pizza directly on this in the pan. So. I'm going to be heating the stone up in my pan over a fire, and that will be where the baking takes place. This is what the pizza crust is going to rest on, just for a non-stick surface. Allow me to get it on and off. And an aluminum pie plate, which I picked up and found. I think that's nine and a half inches. Probably says on the bottom somewhere. Uh, I can't quite see it. In any case, doesn't matter. Normally, this would nest nicely inside so that I would have an, a simple oven anyway and something that you can eat with. But for this time, all I have to do is turn it upside down and I have a surface that I can put some hot coals on. That will be more important for when I do the toppings and just want to make sure the cheese gets all nice and crispy and juicy and that type of thing. But I'll do some baking with some hot coals on top of this. So that's the basic setup. This be the pizza crust on top of the stone in the pan, that on top. Even the tongs I picked up at the thrift store so that I can move coals around to put on top. So everything, including this bowl. And that's what's coming into the picture next. So this is one of those uh, stoneware, I think they call them, enameled steel bowls. There are a number of makers, GSI makes some, that type of thing. I was fortunate enough to find a bowl and a mug that matched at uh, the thrift store, way, thrift store one day, so I picked them up. So what am I going to be doing with this? Well, I'll show you more closely when we get to doing it, but basically I'm creating a double boiler. So I have a pot that has appeared in a number of videos that I'll bring water to a boil in. I'll set this down into the pot. It won't actually go down all that far. And this is where I melt my uh, already shredded mozzarella cheese. So I have quite a bit. I have a cup and a quarter of mozzarella cheese. I actually have more in here because some of it I have to keep behind for the toppings on top. So the basic concept is that I'll be melting the mozzarella cheese in a double boiler. I'll then be adding an egg and these ingredients. And this is almond flour, baking powder, and xanthan gum, along with a little bit of salt and some garlic powder. By the way, if I haven't said it already, all the ingredients for this recipe will appear in the video description below. I will tell you that you don't have to do the double boiler method at home. You can use a microwave for this, and well, obviously that's not going to happen out here, but at home you could put it in a microwave-safe bowl, give it 20-second shots and as it starts to get soft, and then once it's very soft, then you can move on to the next process of adding the egg and adding the almond flour. All the proportions and ratios and everything will be included in the video description as well as the nutritional information of the crust by itself. So all the macros, the fat, the proteins, and the carbohydrates and the ratios will all be in the video description. What I am not going to take into account for this lunch today are the toppings, which is just going to be pepperoni and uh, mozzarella, more mozzarella, and of course the uh, pizza sauce, the pizza topping. So that won't be counted into the macros for this, but the, everything will be based on the crust. So the next step, obviously for me, is to get a fire started in a wood stove that I brought out that's made from stuff from the thrift store and get some water into a boil so I can start melting my cheese. All right, so the first step in creating this fathead dough pizza is, as I mentioned, to melt the uh, mozzarella cheese and get it all nice and soft. So as I mentioned, I'm going to be using making a double boiler. So here's my mozzarella cheese. I'm going to take a cup and a half or a cup and a quarter, sorry, or as close to it as I can, shaking back uh, just enough to use as a topping once we get to that point. Take the lid off, boiling hard, put this on. Now that lid is a little small, so I think what I'll do is just use my pan on top. And we'll keep a, a close eye on it to see how it is doing down there. So one of the things, of course, is that uh, with a double boiler, 
I should not be able to burn the cheese. Should not. That's the point. It should not be able to burn the cheese because it, it won't can't get too hot with just steam doing the cooking. But got to keep an eye on it just the same. So what I'll do now is I will keep an eye on this. And when the cheese is melted, we're ready for the next step. I'll bring it back. So I, ooh, that is hot. Yes, that is hot. Two gloves will be good. So the cheese is melted. Hopefully you can see that, just nice and gooey. Not sticking to the bottom, a little bit on the outside, but that's where it's over the uh, edge of the heat here. All right, ready to move on to the next step. I think I'll just leave it sit for a minute and maintain. I don't think this will show on camera. I may have to back up and give you another view, but this uh, wood stove that I'm testing out and having fun with here is slowly sinking into the earth and the ice. So uh, not the best, but I just keep an eye on it and it works. I've got a small supply of wood. All right, next step, moving on with the cooking. So the next step is to take an egg, a single egg, and you're not scrambling it or whisking it more than just combining the yolk and I'm gonna need that. Can I do that with my fingers? Yeah, I can. No, I can't, that's hot. I need my single spoon for this. Should have brought a fork. So all I'm doing here with the egg is just kind of incorporating the yolk and the uh, white together. I'm not whipping it up or anything else like that. And that's about to go into the pizza. In fact, I think I need to reposition the camera so that you can get a better look at what it is I'm going to do next. All right, I've said it before, and uh, it's just worth saying again, I think that the trick to cooking outdoors is, of course, understanding how everything goes together, but more importantly, it is the management of the fire and timing everything, because you really only have one burner that you're working off, and you have to keep a heat at a certain temperature. Uh, it's just experience, but in gaining that experience, you're learning an awful lot of valuable skills and having fun at the same time. So. I have my cheese still sitting over the hot water, ready to, uh, just keeping it soft. I have my uh, almond flour, baking powder, xanthan gum, a little bit of garlic, and a little bit of salt. That's going in now. The ingredients, as I mentioned, will be in the video description, as well as the egg. So, pour that in. See if I'm going to be able to hold on to the bowl. I am? Good. So the trick here is to get everything incorporated. Now, I'll tell you, you won't be able to do it with just a spoon. You're gonna start off and get everything moving, try to scrape down the sides, get everything. Am I showing this well enough? Can you see how it just looks like a soft ball of dough? Basically, what it is, of course. Well, that's what you're trying to create. Uh, it takes a little while for the almond flour and the cheese and everything to combine. And this is the trick to success. Good, it's not too hot. And that is picking it up with your hands and kneading it into a nice consistent ball of dough. So let's do that. Mm. You get to taste it along the way as well. So I can move this pot of water out of the way. And basically, it is wet right now, but the almond flour is going to soak up the uh, everything moist in there, the egg, the cheese, and everything else is going to create a nice, consistent ball of dough. And I'll just take a minute to work on this. And then I'll go on to the next step, which of course is shaping the crust. And in the meantime, I took my fry pan, my Pele pan, my pizza stone. I have them over the heat of that wood stove. They are heating up. I can see a lot of heat being generated there. I don't want to wait too long. All right, I'm going to give that a second to help incorporate uh, itself. And in the meantime, get my hands cleaned up, and then I'll come back for the shaping. All right, so all I've done is, for a working surface to something flat, is use my, my pie plate turned upside down with my non-stick. 
piece of material that I have here. Try to get it started and just work it out. Try to, I'm aiming for an eight, eight and a half inch circle from this amount of materials. Now, if it gets a little thin, that's okay. If it's a little thick, that's okay. But you have to kind of work a little quick when you're out in the cold. I don't know if you can see steam coming off of this. I can, of course. Yeah, that's working out pretty good, actually. Very good. A little too much there. Move it a little bit this way. Because, of course, if it gets too cold, it's going to stiffen up before you're ready to put it over the heat. Yeah, that's about eight, eight and a half inches. Good. Ready. All right, now I'll transfer over to where you can see me putting this on the pizza stone. There is a lot of heat coming out of that. Mm, maybe too much. We'll see. So normally you would do this in a 350, 400 oven. All right, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to keep an eye on this. I don't want it to cook too quickly and burn. But uh, what you're looking for here is, of course, just the top of the crust starting to get a little bit golden around the edges. It's not gonna be, not gonna look like a regular pizza crust in terms of rising up high and uh, getting all fluffy. Uh, but it will turn a little golden around the edges. And then you're gonna take it off the heat and let it cool out completely before we add the ingredients that go on top. So that's what I'll do is I'll keep an eye on this. I may have to lift it off this heat. There's a lot more heat in that stove than I expected. And uh, so I'll just keep an eye on it. And when I think it's ready, I'll bring it back and show you what it looks like. You'll probably notice that I'm not putting any coals on top right now. I don't think I need to, I'll save that for when I uh, want to crisp up the top and have the pepperoni and the cheese and everything melt on top of it. So anyway, I'll bring it back when I think we're ready. So as I mentioned, timing is everything. And I may have slightly burnt the crust a little bit on the bottom, but that's not, I'm not upset by that because it, you can see the top of it looks marvelous. Now what I have to do is get it out of this thing. So I'm going to start by taking the pan down. Ooh, I have that other trivet. I think I'll use that to set it on so it doesn't disappear into the snow on me. And then I'm going to have to get it off of that hot pizza stone back onto the pizza plate so that I can apply the rest of the ingredients and then back on to the oven. Uh, there is still a tremendous amount of heat coming out of this. I don't know that I'll add any more wood to this, but I do have to let that cool down before I can uh, put the pizza toppings on it. So I'll give it a few minutes to cool down and I will show you putting the pizza toppings on. So the other thing, of course, about cooking out in the woods, especially in the wintertime, is the unpredictability of the weather. It's starting to snow. I don't know if that's showing up on camera. Uh, I don't mind being out in the woods in the snow. In fact, I enjoy it greatly. The problem is, of course, my camera itself. So I've got a small piece of cloth over the top of it to protect it from getting wet. This is now, well, it's not cold, cold, but it is pretty cold. Yeah, it got a little overdone in the bottom. Not terribly, but a little bit. But you can see, even so, it's still flexible, but it is ready to go on to the next stage. And I did have to add more fuel to my fire. Hopefully it will burn down quickly enough so I can have some coals and uh, not burn the rest of this. So, pizza sauce. Uh, you want to find a low carb pizza sauce. If you're a grocery store, so you know what you're doing, of course, is you're checking the back of the labels. You're looking for things in it that you may not like. Uh, first one, of course, is sugar, because a lot of them do have sugar in it. Make sure there's no wheat products or anything else that has carbohydrates. The nutrition will be there as well, so you can use that. Failing that, you can do kind of what I did here which was to take regular tomato sauce, again with no sugar added, put it in the pot and start to simmer it down to it got a little thicker, add it all the Italian seasons you normally would, and a little bit of olive oil, 
And you've got pizza sauce. That's There's no magic to it, right? And it tastes pretty good. All right, so there is my pizza sauce. Lots and lots of pepperoni. So this will jack up the calories tremendously. You know what I found? This crust alone makes a really nice garlic bread. Just add more garlic when you're making or garlic fingers or whatever else you want to call it. Add more garlic into the mix. And it's wonderful just by itself. You don't have to dress it up the way it is. And as I mentioned, still pretty high. High fat, high protein, low carb. Oop. I'm eating about one in every three of these pepperoni that makes it onto the pizza. All right, that's enough. Don't, no need to overdo it. Some more mozzarella. And it's not like I have to put too much mozzarella on because there is so much already in the crust. But, you know, without melted mozzarella, can you even really call it a pizza? Again, I think that's probably enough. The rest won't go to waste. I'll actually see if I can get it all on. There. All right, my fire is starting to die down. I do need to let it die down a little further before I can put the pizza stone and everything back in. And that's when I'll bring it back. And in an attempt to move things along a little quicker, what I'm going to do is uh, I found that the pizza stone already was retaining a fair amount of heat from where I had it on for the original cooking of the crust. So rather than have a lot of heat underneath the pizza, uh, really it's not necessary. All I'm trying to do now is melt the cheese and heat everything up. What I'm going to do is take out a number of coals. Hopefully there's some half decent sized ones here. Lay them on this birch bark but not for very long because uh, the birch bark will light up, of course. Get the grill back on. Get that on. Get that on. And I'll get the coals up on top. And I can tell you there's still a lot of heat coming out from underneath as well, so uh, that, that provides me a little bit of heat there, good. So now, all I have to do is give it a few minutes, let the cheese melt. Hopefully I've got enough heat going in there. If not, I can always add a little bit more in a minute. And I'll bring it back when the pizza's ready to be served. All right, the big reveal. So in full disclosure, the fire inside of my stove died down faster than I anticipated. The coals on top died down and faster than I anticipated. So as you can see, I built just a three or four stick fire on top of the pan, which I now have to clear off. Yeah, am I going to do this? I'll just take them off. Put them back into my stove in a second. Ooh. All right, let's see if I can get this lid off. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, my goodness. That looks good. Could be a little bubblier. Could be a little browned on the, on the cheese. If I left that fire going another minute or two, I think it would have worked. I don't want the crust to get any crispier than it is. That is, that is spot on. Okay. It's going to take a few minutes before I can eat it. I'll take it off of the heat. I'll work to set myself up so that I can do the taste test. Okay. Yeah, I can handle that. All right, it's not too hot. Ah, pizza. I'll bring you in for a closer shot in a second. I've cut it into quarters. Can you see? Ah All right, let me come in closer. Let's see. Then get my face out of there. Didn't burn that bad on the bottom, just nicely browned. I thought it might have burnt worse than that. Gooey. You can pick it up, you can bend it. That's what you're looking for in a pizza when you're at home. 
that's the goal, at least in the woods. Mm. Where's that bandana? Can't find my bandana. I'm probably sitting on it. Mm. Wow. So I had learned from some of, not my mistakes, but from my learning experiences at home, I had loaded garlic and Italian seasons into the cheese uh, when I made the crust. If you do that, don't put too much in. That, that's my lesson that I learned there. Don't put too much in because it seems to accentuate itself once it's cooked. It gets very strong. Now, if you're looking for garlic bread, that's just fine. But if you're looking for something that doesn't overpower the rest of the pizza, maybe just leave it out altogether or try just a little tiny bit. In the pizza sauce, that's a different matter. Put as much as you think you can tolerate. The crust is just amazing. Can you see? look at that? You know, even a regular pizza cooked in the woods can be a challenge. Trying to cook a low-carb, higher-fat, ketogenic type of pizza with all the non-traditional ingredients, that can be quite a challenge. Once you learn how to make a fathead pizza crust, it's very forgiving. It's as long as you've managed all the cooking is best to your ability, keeping it from burning on the bottom, trying to get some heat on top to melt the cheese. It's, it's not that hard. This has become my favorite way to make pizza. Do you know, I don't, I think if I wasn't on a keto diet, I'd still like this, but it would be heavy in fat and protein. So be aware, check out the macros in the video description. If you're wondering just how this is a big meal. I mean, that pizza doesn't look all that big, but trust me, I'm probably approaching, with all the toppings, 800, close to 1,000 calories in this meal. That's plenty big. Two of those or another meal like this today would be all that I could possibly uh, consume. Okay. This has worked out at least as well as I expected, maybe even better than I had hoped for being out in the woods with all the challenges that go along with cooking in the woods over an open fire. Uh, I, I am very happy that I was able to use all secondhand thrift store type things that I scavenged and put together without having to spend a lot of money on expensive cookware. There are other ways of baking that I've shown in past videos, including reflector oven or inside of a pot turned on its side. They all work. I just wanted to do this one a little different with the pizza stone. I had the pizza stone. Why not use it? it it's a great heat sink, holds the heat uh, just like it's intended to. Uh, there are other recipes for pizza crusts that I will try. I mentioned cauliflower and I mentioned the almond flour, coconut flour combination. I will try those at some point. But uh, what I want to do now is open it up to you and ask you, what do you think of this recipe? Will you try this yourself at home or in the woods? Again, the recipe will be in the video description. If you do try it, let me know how it turned out for you. I'm interested to know your successes or your learning uh, lessons that you got out of it. Is there anything else you would like me to try in terms of pizza crust besides the fathead, the cauliflower, and the almond flour, coconut flour combination? If you know of another one, then uh, please point me to it or, or send me a link of some type, and I will be sure to take a look at it and see if it's something I can accomplish out in the woods. If you have any other low-carb, ketogenic recipes you want me to try out here in the woods, I've got, a, I've got a lot, I'll be honest, but I'm looking for more all the time. So if you have any great suggestions, please put those in the comments section. Okay, that's all I have for you today. I'm going to enjoy the rest of my pizza before it gets cold. It has, like I said, it's snowing, although it seems to have lightened up for a moment, which is great. Yeah, get out and explore. Take that path, let's travel. It will make all the difference. Bye for now.